Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sith Council. Yes, today is Revenge of the Sith. It is the deep dive. It's myself and Steph Sabra. Kalinowski thought we shot an hour later than we normally do, but hey, he's special. Uh, it's it's really nice to have you back. Thanks for joining us here today. Before I get into the deep dive with Steph Sabra, don't forget on October 8th in New York, Myself and Mark Ellis are doing stand-up. Mark's going to be there October 7th also. The New York Comedy Club. You can get tickets at markellis.live. Please go ahead and do that. Uh, first time I'm doing 15 to 20 minutes in a long time. So I hope to see you out there. Uh, once again, markellis.live. Get those tickets. All right. Let's do it. It's a deep dive. It's Sith Council. Boom. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus. Makes you stronger. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Sith Council. It's the deep dive of Revenge of the Sith, the third movie of the prequels. If you didn't know already, and this first time you're joining us, we've already done The Phantom Menace, did Attack of the Clones last week. Watching these movies with new eyes and also trying to tie them in and seeing anyway rather how they are going to tie in to the upcoming series that are coming out i think this one more so than ever is going to tie into series but joining me today the one the only steph sabra hello how are you i was gonna start with you're so beautiful thank you so much (laughs) i appreciate that it's very nice of you um it's uh it's great to have you on the show again and us we're talking about the revenge of the sith um It is easily the best out of the three. It still stands, I think, the best of the three while watching it. I still, though, even more so than ever, find the beginning so goofy. The beginning, the opening scene with Palpatine. Palpatine is one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character, right? And he is so goofy in the in the beginning of this thing, and the the stuff that they're doing and running around with the elevator, and some of the writing in the beginning is as like Attack of the Clones bad writing. Patience, yeah, I choose patience. (laughs) That, and then and then when he pops in, when the the stupidest line that I don't understand why they kept it in there is when Anakin pops through after being on the uh, the elevator, and he pops in, and and Obi Wan goes, "Oh, oh, it's you," and then it cuts. Like what? Why? Why is that in there? And you're a Jedi. You should have known. <laughs> you should have sensed that your partner is coming. I mean, Obi Wan does a lot of stupid things in this I movie. Know. He does a lot of stupid things in this movie. But but the the beginning of this movie and the, the the grievous stuff and and a lot of the goofy faces Palpatine's making, like when when uh, Obi Wan and and Anakin are fighting Dooku, and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, how do they not tell that this guy's a rotten? Egg. I know, and he's he's actually sitting there in the chillest the position yeah. ever with handcuffs. Yeah, he's like, "Hello." It's like you don't think for a second that looks a little bit, a little suspicious. ominous. There is no distress. No, and especially well, and and it and Dooku doesn't say anything. No. Like Dooku, because Dooku knows he's been had. Once you know he's he's there and and hey, kill him, kill him now. And he looks and you see Dooku like, "Whoa, this wasn't part of the plan," because this plan was concocted between the two of them he should have been like he's lying to you like he set this up he just stays silent i guess because i accepted that and i don't find that to be a flaw because the sith it's always a game of power between the two of them eventually dooku would have tried to take over and kill palpatine because that's the rule of the sith the rule of sith is you have to become more powerful than me and eventually you have to take me out it's all the stuff that was in the Plagueis novel and stuff that the, the, the Sith have always done. So it's like, I'm training you to get powerful enough to overtake me, or I'm going to take you out and I'm going to get a new apprentice. Yeah. And that's ultimately what Palpatine kept doing to people. Like, he disregarded Maul like trash. Yeah. He, Maul Nothing. wants to come back and be his apprentice. He's like, nah, we're good now. He's like, I got, I got some other people right now I'm working with. You know, thanks for your service. Peace out. And, you know, that, that, that carried on to that frustration that Maul had throughout the Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that's the really cool stuff about this movie. Like, some of the acting and dialogue, you're, if you look at it too specifically, you're like, yeah. but then the story really works. And especially with Palpatine, he's sprinkling those little notes of Sith culture, which is one of the best parts about Star Wars, Absolutely. the entire movie. Yeah, I mean, so I as I was watching it last night, I remember, like, saying to myself, yeah, I always had an issue at the beginning of the movie. I I 
did say that I, I they they obviously took the notes from because Anakin's not whiny when no. it starts. He starts and you're like, okay, this is the Anakin that I think that I've always heard about, where he's flying and the way that he is and and the conversations he's having with Obi Wan and that I didn't have a problem with the scene with them in the out in space like getting there because I thought that was a good representation of their relationship. Yeah, you know? like a little brotherly. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was it was once they get into the ship and all the goofiness starts happening that I was like, eh, I can d- deal without this. Except yeah. when R two D two lights up all those droids. Yeah, it's fun. That that's it's fun. such a dunk on you. I just you know <laughs> what it is. You know what it is though. With the, the, the I don't I don't think I'm ever going to accept the fact that. R two D two and C three PO mm-hmm. were involved with all this stuff because at the like. Even uh, I just finished watching the movie this morning, and it went Captain when when, uh, when Bail Organa goes, yeah, wipe the protocol droids mind. Why? That plot holes. It's really the only reason. There's no other reason for him as opposed to wipe both their memories because we don't want any of this stuff out. And R two's like laughing at him. If what they should have done, and this is a missed opportunity in in um, in Rise of Skywalker, when C three PO loses all of his memories. Mm-hmm. All of his memories should have come back. Yeah. They should have brought back all of his prequel memories. They should have brought back everything. And then that would have been a great nod to everybody going, oh, wow. Okay. Yes. They just reset that motherfucker's like this. Oops, sorry. I cursed on my own show until it said not to. Um, <laughs> and they just reset his entire thing. And then it comes back. That would be a great nod. But I just never, Obi-Wan doesn't ever remember. He's, I don't ever remember owning a droid. Well, he didn't own him. He didn't own the droid, but he doesn't remember R2 at all. R2 was with them in the, in that ship and saves his, his ass a handful of times. Doesn't remember him? The whole time Anakin is defending R2. Like, the whole time he's, like, right. making it... Like, R2 is a part of the conversation the entire first Yeah, part. and he's flying around with... And R2 is flying around with Anakin and Mustafar. How about you tell Luke that story? Hey, you know, there's, R2 could say a couple different things and tell Luke, you know... Hey, R two wants you to know he he knows a lot about your dad. He was there for the good and the bad. Never mentioned, <laughs> not not once. R two just wanted to keep it in. I just never. I I thought it was a cutesy thing to do because hey, it's R two D two and C three PO. But you know, you it, to have them there, it doesn't. It never made sense to me. It never yeah, made sense. I think R two makes a little more sense because just because usually. Well, at least in the Clone Wars, we get, like, Jedis accompanied with some sort of droid yeah. that they take. But R4 bites it pretty quick in the beginning of this movie. Quick. Yeah. I was yeah. like, whoa, I forgot. It's like five minutes off. in, yeah. just done. Yeah. And it was, like, the quickest death. But I C-3PO doesn't really have a purpose at all. No, I mean, I think that if you wanted to mix and match and put him with Antilles and you wanted to set the droids on that side of it, like, there was cut scenes in this movie where uh, they were starting kind of to form the rebellion and cert- and there's like having them be part of that. But either way, the movie yeah. as it is, once they rescue Palpatine, and because even Palpatine, like, you know, Anakin's not picking up on this stuff. He kills Dooku, and that's really, even Obi-Wan says it later on in the movie, he's like, or it was um, Yoda, I think, who says that once Dooku was dead, Anakin became his apprentice. Even if Anakin didn't realize it, mm-hmm. Anakin became his apprentice. Right then and there, because the emperor kept saying it. I have a new apprentice, but more powerful. And he's going into the whole thing. That moment after he kills him, that's that to me. Watching it this time around, that is really when he went to the dark side. Because if I accept the fact that he went to the dark side out of nowhere, and you know, just after he sees Mace Windu, he tells Mace Windu all this stuff, and then he just decides, eh, no, I'm going to kill you. For, yeah. For, but if you accept the fact that he killed Dooku first. And that was his journey down the dark side, knowing that he shouldn't have done what he did. And he's having this conflict back and forth throughout the film. Then I started to accept it a little bit more that the fast turn I, I didn't like before, you know, it wasn't as fast as I thought when you when you dive into it that way. That was one of my notes, like main mental notes that I made that watching episode two and episode three so quickly back to back yeah actually really worked in the storyline's favor because my whole childhood I was like Anakin's turn is too quick and too abrupt for me. It was yeah. too intense. But then now, with I don't like the dialogue of the I shouldn't have done that, which we talked about yeah. last week because it's so whiny and annoying. Obviously, you shouldn't have done that. Right. Obviously, not the Jedi right. way. But it hit harder that I was like, okay, that was actually really messed up. Like yeah. you just decapitated this man. He did, and then but he's still because he's still battling with himself because at that point, because Palpatine's I think like testing the waters to see if he's gone full 
dark side because he goes, I'll leave Obi-Wan. And how is Obi-Wan not injured? When you look at that thing that falls down, it like, it like lands on his, you, you see the impact. It was an awkward cut scene It, it should have like it's cut really, his legs yeah. in half or, or crushed his, his pelvis or Anything. something. Anything. Yeah, either way, I did love the line as as Anakin sees him. He's like, no, we got to help him. And he's like, no, nah, leave him. He's going to slow us down. Right then and there, you should know that Palpatine's a, a jerk off. <laughs> and then the second part of it is, I love that line when he goes, his fate will be our own. And he's like, "That's this is my boy. This is my brother. I'm not leaving him. So that battle of the, the dark side and the light, it's still there with him at that moment. And after they go through the grievous thing and they get out and – and they have this scene where they're 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 coming through the atmosphere on Coruscant, and they land. Then the movie just started to flow for me, like starting to move. I you know there's some silly dialogue and things that I think that could still have moved a little bit more. Like the the lines, the, some of the lines between um, it, that's what you were saying beforehand that the the you're Anakin, so beautiful. he's and he's what did he say? And he, but he says you're so beautiful. But then he says something like, "Oh no," she says, "I love you." He goes, "No, I love you." <laughs> And it's like, George, come on, brother. <laughs> and I felt so bad for both of them at that point. There's like, they, they, because Harrison Ford can had the clout, or even when he didn't have the clout, he still had that the balls to be like, no, I'm gonna uh, watch this. And he throws something else in there. Give that. That's why Han Solo was Han Solo. These poor kids. What are they gonna tell George Lucas? No. I don't want to say this. I'm gonna do, like, but. You see, you, but it's it goes back to exactly what we're talking about with Attack of the Clones, and more so in this one than Attack of the Clones. All the the bare bones, the story, the rhythm of it is there. It's just some of the dialogue you just got to get past. Um, but their can their, their chemistry is, better. is way yeah. better. I thought Padme's performance uh, seems was like she cares a little bit more oh, in this one. Way more, yeah. less monotone, less any and more actually emotion in there. Yeah. And then there were some scenes with them, especially when he had just gotten back after um, uh, saving Palpatine. Yeah. And I was like, no, there is serious chemistry. And I remember thinking that growing up. It's just I think the, they were dating for real life too. Oh, at, at that the time? Point. I think so. Oh, I was I too young wrong. for the drama. I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It definitely was chemistry. Like they're both they're a very hot couple, but then their dialogue takes you out of how it how it is. It but you know, it's funny. It it does and it doesn't for me anyway, because in a cl in clone Attack of the Clones, it absolutely did. But I thought that Hayden Christensen's performance is just leaps and bounds better. So Oh, yeah. In this one, because he's not that thing we talked about last time where he's simply not likable. He's likable in this movie. Um, and that scene that we're talking about, even with that silly dialogue of the oh, I love you so much. I was watching his eyes and you he's looking at her lovingly and he's looking at her and like, OK, this is not totally. in, in Attack of the Clones. He, he's looking at her like a creepy stalker. Yeah. And in, in this, he's looking at her like, OK, yeah, this guy loves his woman he really does and that conversation that they had when she told like and his reaction i thought was really good on how he's he's conflicted on how to react when she says i'm pregnant he's happy but he also knows what does this mean in the overall he's the guy's Jumping going to the future he's going through a lot and yeah. then those visions start happening right and like it's like those visions are, are are tragic and it's the balance and the back and forth on how do i how do i accept this like how do i like what do i do and even yoda at one point is like telling him don't focus on the future dude because you don't know it is like don't you know it's, it's you, you're ultimately going to make this thing happen if you don't you got to detach yeah you, you got to detach and he doesn't and he, he just ultimately can't get out of his own way he, since we know a lot of people were upset by the prequels because they just wanted the story to be Anakin's turn to the dark right. side. And George Lucas so obviously wanted it to be the love story too. Right. And he had to be likable in this, more likable, or else it wouldn't be devastating. And right. he was more likable, which is why this movie, act, it is a devastating turn. Yes. And their love, their relationship, the love between him and Obi and him and Padme are really really strong story points yes in hind and i actually enjoyed that way more this time than usual yeah me too and there's a lot of different moments i mean i think the the most tragic moment every time i watch it um is the last conversation that anakin and obi-wan have not not darth vader and obi-wan anakin and obi-wan have when the frustration is there by anakin but he apologizes to obi-wan for being arrogant mm -hmm. and everything he is and he's like i've i've always i've always appreciated everything you've done for me and then Obi-Wan looks at him and he's and and 
he just says to him, he says, goodbye, old friend. That was the sign off. That was it. That was uh, like when you when you go back and watch it, you know, obviously it's it's a foreshadow and that's what it, what it's in there for. But it's him looking, saying goodbye, buddy. And that was his goodbye to him because he doesn't say goodbye to to Anakin later on. I mean, lets the poor bastard burn, which is one of the stupidest things I, to this day. Unbelievable. What are you doing? It's torture. For, it's, it's it's torture and it's dumb. You're there. Yoda sent you there to kill him and you just let the guy burn to death. Slowly. Cut his head off. Yeah. It was, uh, I, I, watching it every time is agonizing. It's, when it's, he's it's, yelling and in sand, which yeah. he obviously is coarse. He doesn't like <laughs> he it. He doesn't, doesn't like, like, like the it. sand. But it, it, and, but it was also, it reminds, it's, it's, there was just a lot of stuff that George Lucas kind of disregarded, you know, because that scene with Luke and Obi-Wan in episode four, and he's telling him about his dad, and he's telling him all these things, how a great friend he was. And, and he says, I'm not your father wanted you to have this when you're old enough. At what point did that happen? Yeah. It was just a lie. Another yeah. lie. He's like, well, he wanted you to have it. I, I think that he did, but I couldn't ask him because he was burning to death in front of me. So I just figured he'd want you to have this. Uh, he didn't even really know there was two of you. So I don't know how he would have known. It was that stuff was just kind of. Yeah, we'll figure it out later. And the movie's right there. <laughs> you made the movie, <laughs> so why wouldn't you put that in? You could do. There's a lot of different things that. How he could would you point. have done the like how Darth Vader's body came to be? You mean as far as the the putting them together? Yeah, uh, like because obviously oh, you he mean loses like, his limbs instead. Instead, well, I even thought about that. Like when he when he's like, I, you got the high ground, and he makes that jump. Right? There was still. I mean, there could have been something where they're fighting off because the volcano thing. That was, I think, in the novelization of episode four, like in the 70s in and Mustafar? 80s. Mustafar? Whether or not it was called Mustafar, I don't remember. But, but that I, kind it, of... It was a vol volcanic planet and everything, too. There was a big battle. They mentioned it, and I'm pretty sure it was in the novelization of either episode four or even episode five. But I think it was episode four about where, how that battle happened. Um, I, it, I don't remember where it was. I can't remember. Um, but either way, that I would have... If they were like... I still think that... I mean. I enjoyed the fight scene a lot watching it today. Yeah, it's and sick. It's really good and it's it's very it's very well choreographed. But I think even without us, it, I they went very heavy on the CGI because of the tools and what they could do and and back then. And I, I understand that to sh to show kind of like, here's all these things that we can do. I think you could have went straight up Robert Rodriguez Mandalorian, like with with this in like Hawaii or scene. something. You could have just put it in a real location with the two of them fighting. I think it would have been uh, very devastating and on the side of it as they're fighting, you know, he, he whether he chops off his leg or whatever he chops whatever and, and it, and he tries to grab him and bounces down and then he sees him fall and then he catches on fire and he's fallen and he's lit on fire down there, like all the way down and just looks like there's just no way out of it. And there's and he, if he goes down there, he dies. Then it's like, okay. Then then I'm like, okay, he I understand that he just he did everything that he could there. But he he legit could have Picked him up, right? And Anakin was like, I, 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 stop that, stop that. And he could have, ca ca <laughs> ca ca he could have carried him back. I, 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 I don't like you. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, and then because he's also very lucky that it happened when it did because Palpatine was coming there to kick some ass. And we didn't, we don't really ever talk about that. Like Palpatine's coming in there. He just had that fight with Yoda. And he's coming in there to kick some ass. And if, if he's there, you know, an hour earlier, Obi-Wan's done. Done. So, but I don't know. Um, all of that was it's it still it still works for me like how because it ultimately what I the reason why we started doing these watch alongs is the question of how does it tie in to the series out of all of the movies we watched so far this is going to tie in the most I believe to Obi Wan like all the stuff like from the end of what he needs to do how do you not put Qui Gon in this series No you can't Come on. not put Qui Gon in the series especially after we know that Qui Gon is force ghosting and that's what it's part of his training yeah is going to be doing I agree. the whole time I was like this is making me so excited for the Obi-Wan yes. series because the stuff between Obi-Wan and Anakin Darth Vader are is so unique and can be explored way more yeah. than it yeah. was and it, it, the movies do give you a pretty good overlook of their relationship but that post devastation we don't get anything and no, that's it's like tragic. this man cut your limbs off and left you to burn to death that's part of the anger for anakin obviously but the the 
the turmoil and the depression and the tragedy that, that Obi-Wan's going through, you see it when he doesn't want to go. Even that there's a great scene in the, in the movie where he's telling, you know, it, everybody makes fat of fun of it when, when he's like, he was out killing younglings. <laughs> but it's a great scene because what he says at the end there when he, when he says, you know, is, you know, obviously Anakin's the father and she looks down and he goes, I'm so sorry. Because he knows what's about to. He's, there's no turning back from this. And even when he's leaving, he's got his. He's like after he killed. Uh, thinks he killed him. He's got his hand over his head. He's he's dealing with this. He's getting sent back to Tatooine. Which Yoda to me. Let's send him the, the Sith. Won't sense him. Where should we send him? Let's send him where Anakin spent most of his childhood. And we'll we'll does he know? Well, yeah, we'll put him with that family. Does Anakin know who those? They don't, Anakin no. doesn't know who those people are, and right? Leia oh yeah, he knows who they become are. Become a princess. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I can't remember where I saw this, but somebody because you know the What If series. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, for Marvel, mm -hmm. if we if the What If was Star Wars, and I never even thought about this part. I always went What If my my first one I always go to is What If Anakin would have helped Mace Windu instead of oh, killing yeah. him. Right, that was my that's my first. Where I quickly changed, where someone said, "What if Luke would have went to Alderaan and Leia went to Tatooine?" I never thought about that until someone said that recently, and I was like. That would be a great what if, like how it how like, and then is Obi Wan watching over the the girl or I would assume so, and but anyway either way that whole scene I'm bringing up Qui Gon Jinn is that there's that major scene at the end where he says before you go and going off to Tatooine part of your training is to reconnect with your old master it's part of his training there so if they don't bring that up. There's no. I don't want them to announce it. I like the fact that everybody's playing coy, but like he's got to be in this series, especially after that scene. Yeah, I think there's no way that he's not. I think they should do what they did with Luke in the yeah. Mandalorian and not say anything until it actually happens, and then have the internet explode. Absolutely. And speaking of which, you know, as far as Mandalorian stuff goes, and after watching that gallery series and showing how they. They, they went with de-aging for Luke as opposed to deep fake, but I think that they've gotten, they're going to go away from that because they brought that dude in that did all the deep fake stuff. And I think that, and I've said this before on the show and even more so watching it today, they're going to do flashbacks of Hayden Christensen and Obi-Wan together, whether it was before Sith, during Sith, during the Clone Wars, whenever it might be. And, Deep fake him a little younger, deep fake Ewan McGregor a little younger, and see those scenes because I just don't understand why they would bring in Hayden Christensen in this series just to be in the suit. I don't think they will. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be flashbacks. Yeah, because that it, there's so that's what I think people really want to see yeah. is some of that, and then we'll get him in the suit as well. I think we'll get both with him. Well, they're gonna fight. Yeah. They're, they're definitely going to fight because there's there's that scene. The, the reason why, I mean, I was screaming for the heavens for the longest time that Vader had to be in this series. And people were like, no, it won't be Vader. It's going to be Darth Maul because Vader doesn't make sense because of what they said. It made all the sense in the world because well, if you go to Return of the Jedi, he just says, Obi-Wan once thought as you did when he says to him, it's still good news. And so I believe that that's basically what this series is going to be. It's going to be Obi-Wan connecting and understanding that there is because because in this movie Padme says to him mm -hmm. it's still good in him because he's not there at that point and when she says that to him on her dying bed it resonates with him so he's gonna I think that that's gonna he's watching over the kid he's doing all that because that last scene as we see in Sith he's looking at uh, Owen and and um and Baru and he's there and we know that that's the setup and that's ultimately that's the one part of of each one of these watchthroughs that's how it's gonna connect to Obi Wan. Yeah, I think I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. And it makes all the sense in the world. And I think that would be a really smart job of picking up what you have and right. building on it as opposed to what we've talked about in some of this movie, like course, ch like changing course into yeah. something that doesn't like fill it. The I, point of this show, I think, is to fill yes, and to grow. Yeah, uh, for sure. And so jumping back into, into Sith, uh, where the relationship with Anakin and, and Padme is, as you say, a thousand times better than it was in the, in the other movie. And they're, they're trying to figure it out and they're trying to whether or not they're going. They're having these conversations, obviously, because he's conflicted. It's it reminded me even more so today of the politics, right, of the left, the right. What side are you on? I believe that this is right. I believe that we should be doing this. 
everybody's on the opposite side of things. Jedi Council wants him to spy on Palpatine. At this point, that's why I throw into the fact that I think he's already his apprentice because Palpatine knows that he's got him. He's got it. And the best scene in the entire movie, and not just because of the Darth Plagueis thing, is the Darth Plagueis it is. speech. It's it, the best it part of the whole really film. It really is. Yeah. Every time I watch it, I'm like, this is what I love about Star Wars. Yeah. When you get just enough politics, just enough history, and just enough like foresight to where you're going to go, right. that's the magic. Because I think... This movie did such a better job with politics. Like you yes. just spoke about like, the different in, um, degrees of how bad people can go, including the Jedi Council, but without throwing it in your face too much. Yes. Well, I think that that's what um, Palpatine even says. It's like, you know, people, once you get in power, you don't want to lose it. And that's the whole point. You just stay there and you the, the downfall of mo a lot of people is they, they just don't want to come out of power, right? And he was ta he's talking about himself as much as anything else. And he's and Ian McDermott is one of my favorite actors in all Star Wars. And when he does, there's this one part that I just love so much when he's telling that story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, and ironic, and he and he's and he's, Anakin might as well not even be in the room. He's so reflecting and remembering killing his master that you see him with this little smirk on his face and the whole thing. And even though it's not canon. Um, I go back to that novel because they, they play out that moment of how he kills him. And it's like that movie, for someone who's been watching The Sopranos yourself, you know, it's like, that's a book. That's a straight up gangster story. Gangster. Oh, it's a gangster, gangster. story. It is an absolute gangster story. It's, it's the most mob kind of gangster story out of all of Star Wars. And it's the most adult um, out of all the Star Wars books. Maybe Darth Bane also. But I think that that's... Something I hope, I would love for them to adapt. I'm just going to keep putting it out there in the galaxy to hope that uh, that that they turn that series into it because that monologue that he gives about Darth Plagueis the Wise and because he knows there's two things that he says there. He says that he's that Darth Plagueis was so powerful that he can manipulate midichlorians to create life. Mm -hmm. And when you're watching it, you're like, oh, well, did is Darth Plagueis who created an Anakin? And then... As he goes further along into his monologue, he's like, well, he taught his apprentice everything he knows. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Did Palpatine do that? Did Palpatine? No, that's what they've always kind of, you know, uh, alluded to. And they've also kind of people are like, well, if that's the case, then Palpatine is kind of Anakin's father in a certain weird sense. But it's never confirmed. It's never confirmed that yes. he did that. It's never confirmed. We just know that in Phantom Menace, it was manipulated and he... The, that not manipulated that he was just Shmi says okay uh, I don't know how it happened I can't explain it but he just appeared and Palpatine kind of confirms that inside of that Palpatine uh, inside of that Plagueis speech yeah dad no daddy issues have been a massive yeah. plot point of yeah. Star Wars Palpatine is grooming him the entire prequels yes. and it's it is the most powerful part of the film in my opinion because when you look at all the seeds that Palpatine plants throughout yeah. the films, you're like, okay, I, in that conversation, you really start to see why Anakin, you you empathize in a way why mm -hmm. he would do that. He goes way too far, obviously. Right. He kills younglings in the words of Obi, but you get why he's so fearful of losing Padme. Right, and that was the only thing that as I'm watching, like, you know, because he's, he's having these dreams. He doesn't want to lose her. The, tra the it plays back into Attack of the Clones or how he lost his mom. He he acted too fat. He acted too slow. He wasn't able to save her. He didn't act on his on his impulses or and and he. But he's he has a couple conversations inside of this movie. Like I know I shouldn't be thinking that, but I am. I know I shouldn't. Do and then Palpatine keeps setting him up, knowing these things. He's he, Palpatine knows they're not going to send him to Utapau. He knows that, but he's like smart. He so yeah, smart. he says to him, he goes, "Have them send you to go kill Grievous." Knowing full well they're not going to do that because they want to spite him. So he's in his head, he's thinking, well, they're not going to send him. He'll stay here. Obi-Wan will get the hell out of there. I can get him even more into this kid. Palpatine's, and he'll be pissed that they didn't send him. Yes. Palpatine's always 40 steps ahead of everybody. He always has been. So when he even when he's he's waiting there and he's he's got a gamble, right? He's got a gamble and he's got to hope that this kid plays into his hands and says, all right, well, is the light side or the dark side, what's more powerful this kid? I got to keep playing off the fact of, no, you got to save your, you got to save your wife. I'm the only one that can teach you how to do it. Don't, don't mess this up. You could, you know, you don't want to, uh, what happened to your mom? You don't want this to happen. So make sure that you 
you stick with me. And he even tells him, he, he reve- to, to everybody else, he doesn't say anything, he reveals his cards that he's Sith. And he's like, but it's this thing that's going to help you. So I'm just, just for a reminder, knowing again full well, yeah, he's going to go rat on me, but he's going to be so inside of his head because once they come after me, if they get me, he's got to save me. Yeah. He yeah. Has 10 steps ahead. No, I, he is so evil. Yeah. And watching him, even when he enacted Order 66, how quickly he just slays every Jedi yeah. in the room other than Mace Windu. But I was, you forget how powerful he is. Yes. And it's a, uh, a McDermott that was not the, not the master swordsman. I, I like, can't, I almost like, can't watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's some funny there's, there's there's some goofy stuff going on and even and my the funniest thing that it's not supposed to be funny but it is is when yoda comes into the room and he well it is supposed to be funny when he takes the two guards out that's a riot oh yeah and then palpatine has a great palpatine moment where he hits him with the lightning and he's like my little green friend <laughs> it's such a great line it's such a great palpatine line but then yoda gets up and force pushes him they do Palpatine so dirty and this he flips back on a chair his ass is up in the air and is like he looks like an old lady when he when he falls it's like come on throw him against the wall yeah he look I mean it it's, looks like in theater when you're on strings yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know they should have played <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's so goofy he, like he lands back and his He's literally his ass is like hanging up. Yoda somersaulting. Yes, but the, I don't mind the. the I the, like the, Yoda. His CGI is so much, much better, better in this one. Yeah, the fight. The I prefer this fight between Yoda and Palpatine than I did with Dooku. the Dooku stuff. Mm-hmm. I actually think, even though I understand it got a massive pop in the theater, people loved it. They were screaming and yelling for Attack of the Clones, and it was the first time you actually see it. I actually think it would have been more impactful if you would have seen Yoda with a lightsaber for the first time against Palpatine. Mm. I think when he shows up and you're like, holy shit, is, is he going to, is he going to light these, is we're going to see a lightsaber fight from Yoda? And then Yoda starts flipping around at that point. I mean, I know that you, the argument against that is, well, we've eased you into that. We already know that he's a master swordsman because you've seen what he did in Attack of the Clones. But the fight's really good. It's a really good scene between the two of them. And it the juxtaposition between that and, and then what's going on on Mustafar, it plays well. They do that a lot in this movie. Even when Padme's given birth to the twins, the birth of Darth Vader is happening at the same time. Yeah, the the A plot, B plot is yeah. really strong in this. And I thought that they did a really good job, whereas episode one and two were a little bit choppy in the way that they were cut. This one really felt like a fluid story. Like, you don't exactly know how many days or months it's being taken, but it flows really yeah. well. And they do that between Padme, Anakin, and then Palpatine. Like, yeah. those three sides They move sides it around a couple really times. Really well. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing I was talking about with you, with you and Mike last week, the Millennium Falcon. When oh, yeah, we it, see. It's, yes. it's in this movie. I almost texted yeah. you. I was like, it's this movie. It's in this movie, <laughs> yeah. It's like right in the beginning, I think, once they show up to yes. yeah once they show up to Coruscant. Yeah. They, that's, uh, George Lucas is also in this movie. Where is he? he is, he's dressed up. I forget what the – I mean, every Star Wars competitor will, will, will get this. Any Star Wars competitor who's watching this right now, and most of the fans watching it will know his character's name. I, it's like Pob – Bob, mm-hmm. Papa something I can't remember what it is. Yeah, but he's he's an alien and he's standing right outside the the doors when you go into the plague scene. That's right. It's it's okay. it's like right yeah. he's like right there. Yeah, so I, think um, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, so we're gonna keep going on uh, with the breakdown of this movie, but before we do, I also wanted to let you guys know uh, once again our good friends over at Meundies. It's fall, everybody. It's fall. You gotta replace. Your water intake with pumpkin spice lattes and go out of your way to step on a crunchy leaf because the coziest time of the year is here. I love fall. I love the weather of fall. I love everything about it. But you got to get comfortable in fall. You got to get comfort in undies, loungewear, and more with me undies. Me undies believes that comfort is more about just what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. I've had me undies now for hell. Uh, I mean, it's got to be coming up on five or six years. We first paired up with them when I was doing schmoes no and I uh, right now I'm trying to think the the they have like these pizzas with the mushrooms and pepperonis it's very comfortable very comfortable it's uh I I I love them I love them they have star wars stuff they have all these different uh, uh things that fit your personality and you should you should absolutely 
check it out because for me, and I even the, the pajama pants that they have, the bottoms are are very comfortable. And it's it's fall; it's going to start getting colder, and you you want to be you want to be comfortable. Imagine the softest thing that you guys have ever felt in your life. Now imagine that the same thing, but it's on your butt. You are now thinking about MeUndies. They're designed by the country's top soft the uh, top softest excuse me top softness scientists to be the softest thing that you've ever worn. Period. From undies to loungewear their fabrics are breathable light and almost irresponsibly cozy really i'm telling you you, you're you're not going to want to get off the couch because you're going to be so comfortable in your underwear i've I've told you that already i've warned you it's available in sizes extra small through 4xl in a variety of classic colors and iconic prints me undies will have you back and uh, and it will also take care of your butt it's going to take care of your butt MeUndies has a great offer for all of Sith listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you're going to get 15% off. It's a great deal. That's not the, the best deal? Okay, fine. How about free shipping? I'll give you free shipping also. 15% off and free shipping. MeUndies also has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they will refund it or exchange it. No questions asked. Now, in order to get 15% off your first order and free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, this is where you have to go. You see it on the screen, meundies.com slash Sith. Meundies.com slash Sith. Okay, so. There's one thing I have to say. Yes. Fuck, command. sorry. Oops, F. Screw yes. Commander Cody. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same thing as that chip. You 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 were you were, you were in the you were in the clone you were watching Bad Batch. I didn't, know. Didn't you watch that more so with Bad Batch yes, on your mind? Totally. Right. Like the clones hit so much harder yes. after you watch Bad Batch. Even with watching Clone Wars and revisiting these movies, Bad Batch really makes this hit harder because of the chip. Yes. But this the scene in which Cody's like, "Why Obi Wan dabs him out?" Like, yeah, here's your lightsaber, gang, gang, and then. And it's like, Fire let me shoot him. you down. I kill your nice lizard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like he just takes him out. That whole thing, by the way, and, and rewinding even a little bit more with that, with that when he, when Grievous is finally taken out. And it's weird because Grievous, and I still feel this way as far as the films go, because if you don't, and I saw a lot of comments coming in through Attack of the Clones, our rewatch, and, and a Phantom Menace. Some people understood what we were saying. We were saying you got to rewatch these, like, episodes of the Clone Wars yeah. series. and and. People understood, and there are other people like, well, I don't want to watch it like that. I want to watch it like a movie. I shouldn't have to. You're right. You shouldn't have to. You absolutely shouldn't have to watch it like that. And I think that that's kind of a detriment to part of the movies because it it does make the movies better when you watch Attack of the Clones, but you shouldn't be like, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. But Grievous is another example of he's way more you way more invested in him in a villain if you watch that series because if you just watch the movies he appears totally. he appears out of nowhere you don't know who Has he a is weird chess problem you don't know how he got that you don't understand any of it no. and it's just like well who wait wait who is this guy yeah. you don't even mention him in attack of the clones and he's just he he's he he's the guy now that you have to t- count dooku that's the problem with the movies the movies was darth maul great villain you think he's dead by the end of the movie. Okay, he's gone for the rest of the No, No more for him until Attack of the Clones. Uh, or, excuse me, Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Attack of the Clones. Dooku's the guy now. Well, he's dead now in the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. And now there's this new guy, this this cyborg type thing, whatever the hell he is. We didn't really tell you anything about him, but now he's the one you got to invest in. But wait, wait, but you didn't give me enough to invest in yet. Yeah. So when Obi-Wan kills him on Utapau, you're like, okay. But if you watch Clone Wars... It's way more effective because way this more. dude has been trying to he's they have gotten him so many different times and he kept getting out. So this is the conclusion of that. So that's why I stand by the fact that if you watch the Clone Wars series, this scene when Obi-Wan takes out um Grievous, way more effective. It, I yes, I think Grievous is a sick villain yes. and I actually really like Grievous. Literally. Literally. Yeah. But if I was watching and had no idea as in I would be like wh- who, what kind of chest problem does he have? He has bronchitis. Right. And what is it? You there's don't even no know. There's no explanation. He's just hacking up loogies right. half the first part and of the film. And you're like who is this yeah. guy? Yeah, like oh well now the war won't be over until we get Grievous like since when? Yeah. Like oh well it happened in in the in between and you're like well but I don't see that and for those commenters were like well i shouldn't have to do that you're right but if you decided to go through the clone wars series you will be rewarded a lot more and, and that wasn't the intent 
back no. then, obviously, there was no Clone Wars series at the time. But it's what they're able to do in these series, as you were saying before, that there is a lot. People, some people think that they oh they try to retcon and make up. No, there's there's pieces in between that you 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 have an ob- ability to make this massive puzzle. And if you can make the other ones better that there were certain problems with, by all means, do it. And I think that that's what this movie is certainly going to reap the rewards from Obi-Wan. It's, it reaped the rewards from Bad Batch, Clone Wars. So when it all plays together as one big connective tissue, to me, plays a lot better. I, I think so, too. I think that, obviously, the original trilogy, all each of them are standalone, outstanding films in any film right book that you are talking about the the prequels are great for an interconnected universe once you know that we're getting all these shows i think it took a lot of time and maybe yeah. didn't have the plan intended but it's working years, yeah. out it yeah. really is working out in a way where i like the prequels a lot i think they set up ex- what we are loving now yeah. so even if i didn't I wasn't obsessed with it. I've always loved them for a reason. And now I feel like if you trust it and just stayed with it long enough, read the books and everything around it, you're like, okay, I'm, I, this is dope. Television is the best thing yes. that ever happened to Star Wars. Ever. It's the best thing that ever happened because there's so many different things from the animated to all this stuff because you can still do, there's a lot of the stuff with the movies. And as I said, it for someone who's watched all of the series, the animated series and everything, like that, watching that scene with Grievous, I'm like, okay. I, I mean, I've s- just recall so many episodes of the Clone Wars when this guy is just keeps getting away from him and, and causes so much chaos and does all these different things. And they, f- Obi Wan finally gets him, and he gets him with a blaster, which is and they, I, I, I still love the line, They're a little cheesy, but I still love it when he's just like so uncivilized because the reference to uh, New Hope when he talks about not, not, not as uncivilized as a, as a blaster, and he, bring, he brings it in there. But this was, um. All of that, and as you say, then then that's really where it all turns, because Anakin, because and that was the other reason, because Palpatine knew they were going to send Obi Wan, mm-hmm. and he knew that that's that was the only guy that was going to be able to keep him away, because if Obi Wan is there, when Mace Windu, Obi Wan's keeping Anakin there. Oh yeah, and 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 everything's cool, but he knows get. Uh, Obi Wan the hell out of there. Let him go kill Grievous because I want Grievous dead anyway. He needs to be dead so this war can be ended. Because as soon as he does, I'm going to send uh, Anakin over to kill all these idiots. You know the Newt Gungray or Newt whatever his name is, and and kill the rest of them. Um, he, he had a plan. He had it. He had it executed from the beginning, and it also ties up from everything that that Darth Bane put together of the Rule of Two. Eventually. The Sith will be able to reveal themselves and to take over and destroy the Jedi. And Palpatine was like, he was the chosen one for the Sith. Yeah, and use the clones like how they did. Th- that all really played well. That yeah. ma- makes you respect Palpatine as a villain. Yeah, of course. And in a way that you didn't have full, even in the original trilogy, you knew he was a villain, but it was mostly Darth Vader's story. We yes. didn't really understand Palpatine that much. This gives Palpatine the gusto that he needed for vader to be kind of like his little like child right for and it, well it's the only t- do you notice that the only time that he seems to have that kind of father figure is when he goes to mustafar and he goes oh there he is and he goes over and he tells him to get the medical thing but he leans down yeah he touches his forehead like he doesn't just look over him I, I was trying to remember if he did that i was like i feel like he does and he's and instead of like just kind of looking over, I'm like, come on, let's get this carcass in there. I need this guy. It's it's more like there's actually the first bit of like caring because all the canon stuff and the stuff that he starts doing in the comic books and the books, he's torturing this dude mentally. Like he 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 makes him feel bad about himself that he's like like threatening to replace him as an, like with other apprentices and knowing that the more he plays into his anger and his fear the farther down the dark side he gets and this was like the beginning of him putting it together because he knows he had no intention of saving padme he knew that anakin would probably was going to kill padme you know he or choked her out he did and he didn't i still cannot stand that stupid line of eh, you know medically she's fine Everything's oh okay, God, no. but she just lost the will to live. It's like, no, something should have happened to her. Something should have she happened. She just falls stupidly, and it's like, you know, it, it's like. She has, tw- she birthed twins. Like Yeah, it's like. Even the most uncaring mothers, when they birth twins, are like, oh, have a 
little want she, to she has live. The will, she, she, she clearly has a will to live because she just she was so excited to see Leia and Luke. She lost the will to live? Come on. Yeah. That was silly. I mean, you could have st- still done that whole scene but figured out, no, something, something happened. Like, when he choked her out, he, he was... She fell on something, like, you know, whether it was, like, internal bleeding or whatever it might have been. You know, maybe it's a little... I, people are like, wow, oh, that could be too rough for Star Wars. The guy was burning on fire he and screaming and yelling. Yeah, was, with yeah. a lightsaber, right. not even, like, a quick kill. That scene still is pretty devastating, even though you don't see it. Like, when that kid, when the kid's just like, Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. What should we do? And he's like, and he's just like... And when, um, yeah. was it Bail Organa leaving and one of, like, the younger Jedi in training comes out? Yeah, that was tra- George Lucas' son. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like... That's devastating. Yeah. It's like a fourteen-year-old Jedi and he's in trying, training. And he's, he's fighting. Trying. He's fighting, and he's just like, no. And I love. I but my favorite is that because what's Bill Ocana going to do at that point, oh, right? So he's, he's just like he goes, no, and he just drives away. He's like, yeah, <laughs> and, skirt, skirt. Yeah, and they're just, and they're just like, ah, let him go. What's that idiot going to do? But it, that's exactly what he should have done yeah. at that point. No, he but had to have done that. I love the scene when Yoda and Obi Wan go back to the temple, and Yoda's like throwing sabers into clones' chests. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, uh, just yeah. wiping them out. That's when you're so, like, Yoda's yes. that guy. You have to do that with Yoda because you, he got more dialogue this film. Yeah. I obviously... He's calling the shots. Totally. I And what Yoda has some of the most, if not the most memorable and important quotes in Star Wars. And he pulls off that George Lucas dialogue yeah. because it's Yoda. But you can't have him talking more than he did because it is a little exhausting to right. change the way a sentence is. This is true. Yeah, but I mean, but, but he gets his point across too. And yeah, I think when quickly. he's on, and when he's on Kashyyyk and he's feeling all this stuff and then that great moment of when they try to get him and he just decapitates the two dudes, right? That was incredible. Same argument that I have with um, C-3PO and R2-D2. No reason to have Chewbacca there. Oh, yeah. You could have Tarful and, the other, and, the, and, and someone else. No reason because at that point, Luke is good enough friends, really good friends with Chewie and, and Han, and he's on, all he's talking about is, is, is Yoda. Or come through and you can say, oh, he did, probably didn't say anything. He just said something to R2-D2. Come on. He was, he, Chewie could have heard. Wait, did he just say Yoda? The funny thing is, I actually fought with you. I helped him get out of, uh, you know, Kashyyyk. Like, when uh, there was this whole thing that Mike and I did when we were talking about bringing Luke, like, uh, before Luke showed up, I was all for Luke coming into Mandalorian because I thought it made sense for the story. And people were like, well, it makes the universe smaller. No, it doesn't. It fits into the actual story because they've set that up. Moments like this with Chewbacca... At there, that makes, to me, the galaxy, the universe, the galaxy smaller. Because yeah, it's like, felt like... Just selling toys, kind it, of. It was just like, oh, you know that, you, oh, they're Wookiees. You, this is your favorite Wookiee. Don't worry, he's there. Not necessary. Because even the stuff that you loved about Chewie, he doesn't really do. He's just fighting. It could have been anybody, any Wookiees. You know, it's, it's it, that you didn't need Chewbacca there. It wasn't like, well, it was necessary for the story to have Chewbacca there. It's ne- It was necessary to have Luke in, in the Mandalorian because he is the most powerful Jedi at that moment arguments with Ahsoka made. But for mm-hmm. the most part, and she's already told why she can't take him out there it made sense to fit that in there and that's why the moment played the way it does because yeah of course he would if he's out otherwise where the hell is he yeah if he's if he's that powerful and he's running around at that time and this kid he can't fo- maybe he's not the most powerful jedi out there oh, yeah he had to be somewhere else right but now with but with you don't need chewbacca there and it, it, it does it hurt the movie no it's just it just to me was was unnecessary he could have climbed on any wookiee's back any wookiee I'd- Love that part. It's great. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, get me out of here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's ab- absolutely. And I think that that's why I think that particular moment you could have made it smaller because if you wanted to, you could have introduced two more Wookiees, given them more to do inside of it. And then he's, he's you know, there with the problem is the movie's two and a half hours long, right? So, I mean, it's not a problem, but the problem is that that's not a lot of time, actually, even though yeah. it's a long movie. Wasn't the original cut like six hours well i don't know I don't, I don't know what it is but e- either way there's just there's just too much to do because of the major jumps in time the three movies are yeah. now again argument can be made that it, the original trilogy there are some bigger there are some big jumps also but there's that 10 year jump that really you're starting over with attack of the clones yeah because you've got you've got a young kid in the first one and then you got the hayden christensen who we meet for the first time in the second movie so it's like you now have to cram all this stuff into Revenge of the Sith. You don't have time to set up new characters. You don't have time. Again, 
me banging the drum of why television is so much more effective in Star Wars because of these types of things where you can get invested in characters and you have enough time. They can breathe. So when things happen to them or turns need to happen or things happen, it's been set up and you have time. Because you're talking about, like, this is multiple planets that things are happening on. Yeah. It's not like... You know, other stories still can be told better and with movies, and I think Star Wars can still make great movies, right. but because you're telling so many characters that are interconnected into an entire galaxy, it's no wonder a show format is better. It's better, you just and you're trying to wrap too much in, in this final movie, right? And then, obviously, there's that scene at the end where Tarkin is there and... Excuse me, Vader and oh, Palpatine yeah, are Tarkin. look. Yeah, well, Tarkin's there. Yeah, Tarkin. Tarkin's there at the, at the end when they're looking at when all three of them are, are looking at the Death Star. Oh, oh, yeah, the end shot at the very end. Like Tarkin is there, and and it showed even that one scene. It showed at that point the dynamic of Tarkin not really understanding yet who the hell is this guy. Well, clearly, I'm not messing with this. All right, here comes he. I'm I'm out of here, and they and they eventually have a, a pretty good relationship between the two of them and he's the only one besides Palpatine that gives Vader orders because once you get to episode four he's giving him orders yeah. and Vader's listening to him so there's a great dynamic between those two but that's the start there they're watching out and I had way less of a problem now of this whole like I remember watching it for the first time in the theater going oh man we're getting all this now and then it's gonna be it's gonna be over soon and, it, and that's it but now because of the Obi-Wan series all these other things it's like as you said before, it all ties into this this really big piece. Yeah, I, I think it's really going to be exciting to see what Obi the Obi-Wan series does. Yeah. But this this film, is the, it does bring in the classic part of Star Wars that everyone fell in love with. Yeah. When they were, like, the amount of action in this film yeah, a lot of good action is too. really good. And I thought that the entire Order 66 play, when you know you have these Jedis that are having all of these clones turn on them, was it it really is a powerful scene. It is, and it's and you know it also makes that those scenes really powerful is the music. The music in this one unbelievable. All three of the mu prequel, the music is great, but really devastating in in what John Williams does in this one. And when there's a my favorite piece of music in this whole thing is Anakin kind of contemplating going to save Palpatine, and that's the music that's playing. And Palpatine's in his head. He's like, you know. You don't come get me. She did, right? And he's just trying to be good. Because there was that scene with Mace Windu where Mace is like, because Mace didn't trust him. Mace didn't trust him since he was a little kid. Mace and him had beef for since Forever. the beginning. And he, and he even says it straight up in this movie. I don't trust him. He says it straight up. And he goes, look, if what you're telling me is true, that this guy is the Sith Lord, you've gained my trust. Now just sit back. Let me take care of this dude. Because if Anakin sits back, it, it's all over. He, he gets to raise his kids. Pal, uh, Padme lives. The the Republic kind of takes over. The Jedi are still good. He doesn't see that, though. And it's like, when you dive into it, it's all there. It's not conveyed as much, I think, because it's so fast. It's just like, hey, you know, because it's so weird at one point because they Mace Windu's in there to take him to trial. He's like, you're going you're gonna to pay for your crimes. Come on. And then Anakin's like, I need to go to trial. He's like, nah, he's corrupted the whole thing anyway. So it, it's like, don't don't try to capture him. Just try to kill his ass in the beginning. Because by trying to capture him, you should be going for the kill right away. And I think they finally were. But yeah, he wipes out. He wipes out everybody in that scene. You know, quickly. Quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the tongue out really yeah. gets me every time. Like the Jordan basketball throw. <laughs> yeah. It is. But I, I, you also have to ask yourself... How do you not know Palpatine's an absolute freak when he his entire he's deformed and he doesn't care at all? He does not at care. All. He keeps it pushing. Yeah. Not even doesn't even look in the mirror. No. <laughs> so the question was always asked, and I'm sure it'll come up in the comments yeah. also, was was that his real form? I know. That's what people always had said. It's never revealed whether it was or wasn't. Um and I and I think that's also why. Let's see the let's see the the, the prequel series of, of Palpatine because in the novel no he, he's not he's a normal he's a he's a 
corrupt politician who killed his parents, by the way. And yeah, he's, he's, he's an absolute lunatic. It, this wasn't a guy. This wasn't a guy who was a good dude. No, the, turn. He was a he was a bad dude. To the the core. Yeah, he was basically it, it was a, like I said, it was a gangster story of a, a kid that was going like to, to had a lot of problems, but then falls into the mob. Right? Just, yeah, this is for me. You know, as opposed to the wrong kid that falls into it, like Anakin. No, he's never a Jedi. No, but yeah, but no, this guy never, never. No, he was an absolute. He just like that's the. I'm telling you, I just I, I have never felt as confident as if they adapted that Plagueis thing into a six part miniseries. It would be one of the most talked about Star Wars properties ever. They should. We should get like an animator to make like a five minute. You know what they did with like Duel of the Fates, like what it could have yeah. been, like that kind of thing. I mean, listen, I would love for a fan if who 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 do these types of things to make like a. Uh, like a reel or a, or a sizzle yeah, yeah. to do the Darth Plagueis novel by James Lucino and to show like all the, the, the best moments. I mean, or even a fan film, man, like, like they make all these great fan films, somebody to make these fan films to show there's so much there. There's so much there. And it would, I mean, it, it would, I'm telling I, I'm cool with Andor. I want to see Andor. But what's the difference if, if someone was like, "Well, let's do an Andor series"? Well, because he's a good guy. Yeah, whatever. No, yeah. Breaking Bad had a had a bad guy. Sopranos had a bad guy. You know, let's let's have let's let's see the Palpatine series. Yeah, Star Wars. One of the most beloved parts is the dark side. Yes, in a lot of people's favorite parts. But when but the Palpatine part, I was thinking the whole time. I was like, did I forget if he was always like that? Because he all of a sudden gets deformed, and then. Yeah. Once he realizes that Anakin's fully turned, he just embraces it. Yeah, yeah. It, well, he just annihilates Mace and then says, oh, right. "Unlimited power." Oh, uh, and it's like, did you always have the unlimited power? Could I, you have always taken Mace down? It's a good call. Like the question is, is he manipulating Anakin, think, knowing knowing that Anakin needs to make this move in order to go dark yeah. side? Like if he takes him out, then but. I don't know because it also because May, remember Mace is also was like the number two most powerful Jedi behind Yoda. Yeah. So uh, it it's those types of open ended questions. I'm always I'm cool with mm-hmm. like those because it that's like well, you got you got to figure it out. You know, um, trying to think if there's anything else that we missed inside of this movie that the the major the major moments. Obviously, there's that that oh there's a thing that always gets me even watching it. There's a the good dialogue that Obi Wan and Anakin have, and Obi Wan's like you're you've done this to yourself here, mm-hmm. man. Like, like what, what are we talking about here? And, and he's, he's like, and, and Anakin says, my point of view, the Jedi are evil. There's one line though, that I still in, in Vader's, well, Vader says to Luke in, in the original trilogy and says it a lot of different times. One of the most powerful words that he always uses is destroy. Mm-hmm. Like the word destroy to me is more powerful than I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, it's, I'm going to destroy you. It means I'm going to, because he says it to Luke. He goes, don't make me destroy you. And he says to Obi-Wan in this, he's like, don't make me. I'm like, yeah, he's going to say it. Kill you. I was like, yeah. Mm. If he says it at that moment, don't make me destroy you. I'm like, oh, there he is. That's the guy. That's the guy that we, that you see. It, again, doesn't ruin the movie. Just little things I think sometimes that they miss. Missed it, capitalizing yeah. on. Yeah. I think throughout, there's definitely those moments of, uh, of dialogue where they could have hit a lot harder. But I like that scene with Padme too, because the whole time you're thinking, Jesus, Padme, he told you he killed kids and women right. on Tatooine. Yeah. He's done all of these things in front of you. Um, and How do you not see it? Coming? How do you not see it? Right. And then finally she's like, um, this is too much. Right. Obviously it should have been a lot, a long time before, right. but at least you give Padme some sense of morality she separated it finally yeah she separated she took the blinders off because she's sitting in the she's sitting in the senate when she says this is how democracy dies with thunderous applause she knows she knows at that point that it's things aren't right and she sees the guy's rotten face right there like she knows and she's just blinding herself at this point and the sensors on that ship are terrible by the way obi-wan just jumps on board and there's no idea that anybody's there. And and I think that one of the reasons they wiped C-3PO's memory is because he knows how to fly at that point. Uh, I get it. But it's, uh, again, could have been a different droid. Either way, it is a powerful scene because she's ultimately talking about politics and the government and everything, too, of what he... And he said, I love that he says, my empire to Obi-Wan. He says all these things. And 
it's in that conversation of Padme when she hears him, she's like, okay, that's not the guy. Yeah. This isn't the same guy that even though when he was losing his mind after he killed all the sand people, he was still there. I don't know this person. She says as much. She's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know you. you. Yeah, yeah, like that's, and, and I, I think that, you know, and it's, I think it's a slippery slope because you still are playing in the fact that for what George Lucas does in The Phantom Menace, clearly made for children. In the second one, pretty much, for the most part, pretty much made for children with a couple of dark moments, but for the most part made for children. The third one, is, he's he's not playing the children no, in this one. It's the first PG-13 one, right? Yeah, and he's and he's playing, he, he's not playing the children in this one. He's playing, uh, I don't know if Attack of the Clones was PG-13, but, but, he, but I, I think you're right. But either way, he's, so there's these moments, but the question is you still, it, how much do you go over that line depending on tone? And when he's choking her out, at that point you go, well, that's pretty devastating enough. But the problem is when he lets go and she just goes, eh. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, there, there's just certain ways that it was shot that, I don't know, there could have been a little bit more devastating. Yeah, maybe if like Obi Wan came and stopped it, something like that. Some, yeah, but she yeah. just kind of like limped down to the. He ground. doesn't even check her pulse, Obi Wan. I always thought he checked her pulse. He just like touches her. He her oh head. yeah, to see if like I guess he could feel her force. <laughs> I mean, I'm mean, sure. I mean, I guess that's the that's the fix. But but either way, like, and I also thought about it. Luke, he Obi Wan has saved Luke's life a few different times. You know, we don't ever talk about the fact that he had if he if he dies there. Uh, Padme probably doesn't survive that there, and Luke and Leia probably eat it right there. So, so I mean, what's C three PO gonna do? C three PO, by the way, he ain't he ain't no he ain't no uh, snitch or he ain't, or he's not a he's not like a lot of like drivers. Uh, if if things get heated, they take off. Right? Uh. He didn't take off. He waited. He waited for uh, for Obi Wan to get back. Yeah, you know, and he's just like, "Hey, Master, we we put her on the uh, we put her on the thing. She's good to go." He had a lot of confidence yeah. on Obi Wan, and yeah. Obi Wan doesn't even act like this guy exists. Real nice. That is so true. Obi Wan, yeah, C three PO, he is a real one. Yeah, he, he does stand by. And just wipe his memory, poor bastard. Yeah. Anyway, um, Revenge of the Sith. That's our rewatch, and I think we we. Tied into how it works to the series pretty well of Obi Wan. We're going to see a lot of different things. I think that the pain and the tragedy that comes with Obi Wan is going to follow him into this series for sure. I think it ties into the Bad Batch. I think it ties into the Clone Wars for sure. This one, more so than any of them, ties into future series and past series. So make sure that you leave your comments below, everybody. And don't forget that you can check us out on podcast form. The link is in the description, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of that. It helps out tremendously. It gets us amazing sponsors like MeUndies and, and other great sponsors. So please go ahead and do that. Keep your comments coming. Next week's going to be solo. We're going to be doing that one. Lady Proxima coming in hot. Hi, how you doing there, solo? We'll be, uh, we'll be going into that one that one's coming up next um so keep the comments coming because of so much so much interaction with you guys on these rewatches it's a good thing and then once we finish the rewatches up we'll be getting into the book of boba fett so thank you to steph sabra give her a follow will you and we'll see you guys on the flip sides homie i can Yeah.